Following post-war reconstruction, Japan experienced rapid economic growth, which in turn led to increased demand for railway transportation. The Takedo Line, particularly in the industrializing Takedo region, saw a surge in both people and goods movement. It was anticipated that the transport capacity of the Takedo Main Line would soon reach its limits. Although there were proposals for quadrupling the Takedo Line, the idea of constructing a new line with standard gauge, which had been planned since before the war and had already seen some land acquisition and construction, was seen as more promising. However, building a new high-speed line required enormous costs. At the time, long-distance high-speed travel was expected to be served by airplanes, and short-distance travel by automobiles. Railways were increasingly seen as a declining industry, alongside shipping. Additionally, the National Railways budget required parliamentary approval and was subject to political influence. The railway industry wanted to avoid having its construction plans swayed by changes in government policy. Implementing a long-term, large-scale project without stable funding was anticipated to be highly challenging. As a solution, financing from the World Bank was sought. However, in the United States, where the World Bank's headquarters are located, there was a rapid decline in passenger rail use, and the focus was shifting to freight transportation. Understanding for high-speed passenger rail construction was difficult to obtain. As a countermeasure, proposals for incorporating nighttime freight operations were developed, and this effort ultimately succeeded in securing funding. The route followed the pre-war bullet train plans, but the technology of the rolling stock had significantly advanced. Unlike the era when locomotive hauled trains were the norm, there was substantial progress in EMU technology. Based on data obtained from repeated high-speed tests on the Takedo main line, the technological feasibility for a long EMU capable of cruising at 200 km per hour had been established. To achieve high-speed operation with a long train, power supply requirements were on a different scale compared to conventional lines. At 200 km per hour, the primary resistance to motion becomes air resistance, which increases proportionally to the square of the speed. To achieve this speed with a 12-car train, approximately 8,000 kW was required. Under the pre-war plan, even with an increase to 3,000 volts, the DC system would have struggled. The era of AC electric vehicles was just beginning, and the Japanese National Railways JNR, actively pursued the development of AC vehicle technology. As electrification expanded into less profitable regional areas, there was growing interest in AC electrification due to its ability to reduce ground equipment costs. However, the capability to supply large amounts of power was an essential technology for high-speed trains. Three approaches were compared and examined, the direct drive method using simple AC commutator motors. The method using induction motors, considered ideal, with hydraulic transmissions applied forcefully. The method using rectified AC to operate conventional DC motors. Vehicles incorporating these three approaches were actually manufactured and compared. In the end, the vehicle-mounted rectification method that utilized conventional technology was deemed advantageous and was adopted for the Shinkansen. The power grid frequency was divided into 50 Hz and 60 Hz to the east and west of the Fuji River, creating a frequency issue for the Takedo line that crosses this boundary. Vehicles capable of operating on both frequencies would have complex electrical equipment and would be disadvantageous in terms of weight. Therefore, it was decided to supply power at 60 Hz for the 25% of the route that is in a 50 Hz zone. Frequency conversion equipment using synchronous motors and generators was installed at substations to unify the entire line at 60 Hz, simplifying the electrical equipment on the vehicles. Power was supplied at 25 kV, higher than the conventional AC electrification, and with 8,000 kW, the current was kept to just over 300 amperes, reducing the burden on the overhead wire and pantograph. By leveraging the advantages of AC systems, motor control was achieved through voltage control via transformer low-voltage tap switching. This eliminated resistance control and field weakening control, freeing the system from the constraints of resistance control. On the other hand, the problem of induction interference with communication systems arose due to the pulsating current operation for high power. To mitigate this issue, the ripple rate was set high at 50%, and bypass resistors were added on the motor side to address the problem. This also helped in the miniaturization of the bulky smoothing reactors. At that time, without advanced regenerative braking technology, it was necessary to equip the train with resistors for power-to-heat conversion solely for dynamic braking, resulting in a rather heavy train when combined with the heavy transformers. 
Additionally, the duration of power operation was much longer compared to the Takedo mainline express trains, and it was not possible to achieve the high acceleration performance associated with overcurrent operation, like that of the Kodama trains. At that time, the rare use of large IBM computers for RMS current simulation led to the decision that the motor current, with a continuous rated current of 490 amperes, would have a limit of 570 amperes. The overload ratio was set lower than typical for trains, avoiding the extreme settings exceeding 150% seen in trains like the Kodama. As a result, acceleration was quite slow, making the start feel leisurely, compared to today's Shinkansen trains. The issue of current collection through pantographs and overhead wires, which is a common problem for electric trains, was managed to achieve continuous running at 200 km per hour. However, many challenges remained. During high-speed operation, significant sparking was evident, creating loud noises, and even a sense of excitement during nighttime or in tunnels. Through repeated trial and error, various improvements were made to the way overhead wires were tensioned, gradually improving the current collection issues. The new electric train, the world's first to surpass a commercial speed of 200 km per hour, was later given the designation zero, symbolizing the origin of the Shinkansen. At the time of its inauguration, it took four hours to travel between Tokyo and Shinosaka, allowing time for the train to break in and for the ground to stabilize. However, by the following year, the travel time was shortened to three hours and ten minutes, showcasing the true potential of this super express train. Moreover, passenger demand skyrocketed, and the increased frequency of service became a beacon of hope for Japan National Railways, which was already being threatened by the severe deficits of local lines. When the construction of the Shinkansen was initially decided, it was criticized from many quarters as a grand folly that could rival the world's top three foolish ventures. However, those criticisms quickly faded, and the Shinkansen came to be celebrated as one of the symbols of Japan's technological prowess. The fact that such a high-speed railway could be realized so quickly in Japan, a country devastated by war, can be attributed to the considerable accumulation of railway technology and operational expertise that had been developed since before the war. The high-speed steam trains in Manchuria were approaching the standards of Europe and America at the time, standing out as a remarkable presence in the Asian region. Moreover, after the war, Japan National Railways JNR, became a refuge for military-related engineers who had lost their jobs. While shipbuilding engineers found opportunities in the private sector, those in the aviation field had no place to apply their skills due to strict regulations imposed by the GHQ. As a result, these engineers, along with those in the electrical communication field, became a driving force in advancing JNR's technology. In the uncharted territory of commercial operations exceeding 200 km per hour, many challenges arose that conventional railway technology could not address. The participation of skilled engineers from different fields proved to be invaluable in overcoming these difficulties. The success of the Shinkansen sparked sudden interest in high-speed trains in Western countries as well. Countries attempted to quickly introduce high-speed trains by using gas turbines, which are not restricted by the limitations of overhead power collection and can produce more power than electric trains. Western countries, which already had high-quality rail lines with flat and straight tracks, had an advantage in this regard. However, this approach left a sense of incompleteness as it relied on conventional systems. To decisively surpass the Shinkansen, development began on vehicles exceeding 400 km per hour using non-adhesive propulsion, a concept that would change the very idea of railways. With gas turbine vehicles and non-adhesive propulsion vehicles, the maximum speed easily surpassed that of the Shinkansen. However, at this point, the global situation changed dramatically, with a sharp rise in oil prices forcing energy-intensive transportation systems to undergo major policy shifts. During an era when even the electric-powered Shinkansen faced considerations for slowing down, inefficient high-speed ground transportation systems, including gas turbine vehicles with poor fuel efficiency, were shunned. Amidst such conditions, the efficiency of the Shinkansen was once again recognized. Moreover, the comprehensive Shinkansen system, which integrates safety, transportation capacity, flexibility, and efficiency, continues to maintain its overwhelming superiority in many aspects, even to this day. Although Shinkansen systems were extremely expensive, the perception of safety is gradually changing overseas. As a result, there is a growing trend in various countries to adopt the Shinkansen system. 